Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Insight Podcast. I am your host, Daniel Holtaher, the social media and marketing specialist for Sentinel Technologies. And today's episode focuses all around SASE. That is Secure Access Service Edge. And if you want to learn all about it and why it's hot in the world of IT, you've come to the right place. First, we got to let you know that today's episode of the Insight Podcast is sponsored by Cisco, the bridge to possible. So let's dive right in and let me introduce you to my guests for the day. First up, Mr. Robert Kablusik, Chief Innovation and Technology Officer at Sentinel Technologies. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Mr. Mark Combs, the National Director of Enterprise Architecture and Innovation at Sentinel. Welcome. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for having me. And last, definitely but not least, Mr. Chad Richards, the Cybersecurity Specialist here at Sentinel. Pleasure to be here. Gentlemen, thank you for joining. So let's dive right into this. We're talking everything SASE today. We said Secure Access Service Edge, but Bob, could you tee us up and just tell us high level, what is SASE? Yeah, you know, this uh, Secure Access Services Edge is an exciting topic for us. Uh, Gartner predicts that 40% of enterprises by 2024 will have a strategy around SASE, uh, up from 1% in 2018. A lot of it's driven by cloud consumption, hybrid workforce, um, IDC predicts 93% of organizations will use multiple clouds by 2019. So how do you get all of this traffic? How do you get IoT devices, edge devices? How do you give a hybrid work experience in the office, out of the office, anytime, anywhere, and do it in a secure fashion? SASE is a solution to a lot of that. So we talk a lot about SD-WAN as one component of that. Um, SD-WAN offers an incredible ROI, uh, excellent customer experience as far as consuming cloud applications as as more traffic heads away from the private data center into the cloud data centers into SaaS platforms, you're seeing traffic patterns change. That edge becomes more intelligent to route that traffic in the right direction. But the hybrid worker at home needs the same types of services, the same types of experience. SASE solutions offer that. And that's what I think is really going to be driving that 40%. That might even be underestimated adoption by 2024, in my opinion. That is great information. So that's what it is. But Mark, maybe you could tell us a little bit about why it's so hot right now. Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. So, you know, a lot of people will think of SASE or that Secure Access Services Edge, like Bob mentioned. You know, it's just SD-WAN, you know, optimizing my circuits, optimizing my connectivity, kind of getting to that next-gen networking, getting away from legacy technologies such as DMVPN, uh, moving away from uh, legacy circuits like MPLS and getting, you know, connecting direct Internet access. But beyond that, um, you know, SASE is, is, has a lot of security and more. You know, when we talk about securing the remote worker, um, how do we secure that remote worker? The pandemic brought it to light uh, in the last couple of years, more evident than ever when, you know, all of a sudden overnight, our, our workforce went from being on-prem to off-prem. And we had to open, open up VPN technologies. So, you know, we had to extend our any connect licensing. And now that our users that are remote, you know, how are we protecting that remote worker that they're no longer on-prem? And that goes for things as, you know, identity and access, you know, MFA, um, you know, URL filtering. You know, a lot of customers had, the, you know, their next-gen firewall that was on-prem, but the worker's no longer there. They're no longer on-prem. So how do I extend those services to that user? You know, they're they're using, you know, maybe, uh, you know, hoteling office space, office space or they're at home. Again, just extending that security to that remote worker. Um, and then, again, applying all those different technologies. You know, that's just a little bit, um, you know, again, in recent events that brought that. You know, uh, technologies like Umbrella, again, SD-WAN, Viptela integrated, and then moving those things and those services to the cloud, regardless of where the remote worker is, is really what I think has driven that SASE conversation um, that made it really hot today. Um, and continues to be hot, and people continue to work for that because I don't know about you guys, Chad or Bob. I don't. I don't. It doesn't seem like we're going back to any type of. Uh, uh, this is the new norm, right? It's Having our, our, our hybrid hybrid workforce, cloud technologies, hybrid cloud. So that's great. So you touched on umbrella. So keeping it Cisco centric, uh, Chad. Maybe you could tell us how Cisco addresses the market around SASE. 
Yeah, so you know they they feel very well positioned, right? So you know they've been they've been a leader in networking for years, and and uh, so I mean they break it down into three different pieces: so networking, security, and observability. And networking, you know, they have the largest SD WAN solution provider with each solution from Meraki to to uh, Viptela. Um, they're 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 a leader in the in the magic quadrant. Uh, they in security, they've they've uh, um, really kind of taken the umbrella, which which traditionally was just a DNS uh, uh, security or, or or protective DNS, and moved it into a full security stack in the cloud. Uh, and and you know with with that, I mean they've been they've been a leader leader with uh, uh, trying to trying to drive that. And so they you know best of class network and best of class security, and finally wrapping it up with the observability. So they they purchased a company. Uh, uh, thousand eyes, which allows that allows that last piece of okay. Now that I have multiple circuits going to going to multiple locations, how do I know which circuit is the best for for which application, and how do I get to uh, um, you know my cloud app? You know, as Mark touched on, some of the remote users in in the pandemic that that sprung this into into uh, kind of the front runner of of uh, changing changing the dynamic or your transitional roadmap. Also, just cloud movement, moving into the cloud and SaaS, SaaS solutions uh, are are driving that. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense to have a user VPN into your your network and then hairpin straight back out into a, a SaaS solution. And none of us really trust the the SaaS um, security because that's not what they're they're built to do. So, we want to make sure we have our security stack in front of all that, whether the user is on prem or whether they're at home or or in Starbucks. And so, and so, uh, Cisco feels very, very well positioned, and, and Gartner agrees, right? To where, to where they're saying that that Gar- uh, Cisco definitely has the the financial resources to execute um, the vision um, in in Gartner's idea of what what uh, a SASE is and, and all the different parts and pieces. Cisco is completely there on the networking side, on the security side. They are limited availability with a couple of different different features, but they are they're definitely a, a clear front runner when it when it comes to this. That is an excellent uh, analysis. So let's talk now how Sentinel and SASE work. So Sentinel has our very own SASE workshop, and maybe you two could tag team this market chat about what it is and what's included with this. Sure, I, mean, I can touch base on that a little bit. Is you know we we have a workshop. We'll meet with a customer. Usually the workshops you know average around ninety minutes. Where we'll sit down with a customer. Uh, we'll gather some information whether they're running say legacy circuits like MPLS or. Um, you know, frame relay or whatever the whatever the carrier whatever the carrier underlying uh, underlying technology is. Um, figure out how we can leverage cloud technologies again, something like uh, secure Internet Gateway SIG, to see if we can improve their security. And also things like Piptela are are the customers having performance issues with maybe SaaS based applications or cloud based applications, and then you're looking to increase their user's performance while gaining an edge, right? Obviously cost savings is a big factor in everything, but you know, performance and increasing the user's performance is, is a big benefit of that SASE conversation. Um, perfect example, just kind of take a little tangent here. Uh, was it a week or two weeks ago, right? There was a, a large Xfinity outage, right? And we, we always talk about saving money with SASE and kind of, you know, protecting the secure workforce. But think about customers that had that true SASE model uh, running Cisco Viptela, and we're monitoring those SaaS-based applications like Duo or Salesforce or things out on the internet. Customers that had Xfinity or maybe another carrier, right, divergent carriers, they didn't experience an outage because we can monitor the health of that SaaS-based application, for example, Duo, um, and then reroute that because it was unreachable over a certain carrier's link, right? Other customers that maybe had more legacy technologies, such as DMVPN, um, they experience outages. Uh, and I talk to those customers directly. So that, that's just a prime example where something like Cisco Viptela and where we can monitor and at an application level um, and then reroute that traffic according to the layer seven um, can really increase the user's experience. Not only again, not only decreasing their costs. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is like improving their security posture, right? A lot of customers, you know, they check the box, they have the next gen firewall, they'll have a ASA or FTD, but still, right, we have a lot of customers that are not doing things like SSL decryption, right, because maybe of the impact of performance uh, on their current firewall. Um, but if we can move that technologies to the cloud, right, again, software, uh, you know, cloud firewall or secure internet gateway, I can now apply SSL decryption rules on that traffic in the cloud without the need of having a uh, a much bigger firewall on-premise 
um, for my users, right? And I can do that for the remote worker. I can do that for the on-premise worker. It doesn't really matter, right? Because those same rules apply to the users regardless of where they're at. Um, so anyway, that's that's a that's a that's a large part of it. So and how, how Sentinel can how Sentinel can help with that. And again, yes. the workshop you'll get some deliverables. You'll get some outcomes from that. Again, um, it may be a conversation around. Um, I need to save my. I need to save monthly costs. Uh, you know, do an ROI evaluation uh, versus circuits of going maybe dual divergent internet circuits, and what you know going to SD WAN. What can I save from an ROI evaluation? Typically, I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me, but typically we see customers in an average of four to six months of an ROI evaluation that convert from legacy circuits, say MPLS, um, direct T1s, point to points, and they convert over to direct internet fiber circuits and then run the tele that overlay on top of that, usually about a four to six month complete ROI on that. So, and we can do those evaluations as part of our workshop as well. So anything you'd like to add in chat? Yeah, so the, the other key part is, is uh, you know, we can do in the workshop is, you know, one of the questions is where do I begin, right? Is, yes. is where, do I, where do I start with this? And there's so many different components and it all depends on, you know, because the vision is probably, yeah, in three years or whatever my roadmap is, I want to be in this whole SASE, SASE solution. But right now, my current my current need is I need to upgrade my my routers, and I'm not necessarily ready for cloud security. So let's make sure whatever routers we purchase can can actually work within in that SASE environment, um, or vice versa. Where, you know, I'm 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 good on the edge, but yet but yet I need to uh, um, upgrade my firewalls, or I need to centralize my my security. And so maybe I, maybe now I'm looking more towards the cloud security uh, piece as opposed to as opposed to uh, the edge. So. The goal is is if if the vision is to get to the SASE model is okay where where can I take a step in in the direction and make sure that direction is is continually going to the the end of of this roadmap and I'm not headed, setting off on uh, tangents or silos that so whatever whatever dollar I spend continues to move you towards that vision and that's something that we can kind of discover with inside of the the workshop is kind of figure out where you are what what investments you've made what you're ready for what's the what's the next step what are some of the short term goals and, and we'll help you help you kind of build a plan and, and uh, uh, you know, keep you on that same path. So great deliverables that will lead you to that starting point. Uh, Bob, any closing thoughts for us here today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the guys said uh, quite a bit about the technology. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about Cisco's overall direction portfolio on this. You know, really, we didn't talk a, a tremendous amount about the inside of the network, some of the other security, some workload security. It's the whole story that I that I feel Cisco brings together. Uh, just earlier today, I was working with a customer on a worldwide network modernization strategy for them. And I, I changed it to secure network modernization strategy because the network has been an inhibitor for them from a digital transformation perspective. And really what we're looking at is a multi-year approach to changing this, but we're doing things all the way down to the end point on the network. So we're tagging things, we're carrying the tags through the network into the ACI data centers, into Tetration, which is securing the workloads. Uh, we're also looking at endpoint visibility, no matter where anybody is. So SASE is one component of that. You know, it's that edge plus that cloud security. Uh, Mark hit it on the nail on the head there with some of the encryption traffic statistics. 70% plus of traffic is is expected to be encrypted uh, going out the network. So how do you catch how do you catch the bad guy when all the, the good stuff and the bad stuff's all encrypted? You can't really decrypt at scale easily on prem still today. Yet the cloud providers have massive amounts of hardware and can handle that. So setting up those policies to send that traffic where it needs the proper inspection, the cloud provider is, is an excellent place to go. In addition, some of those have direct connections to popular services like Salesforce, Office 365, even things like ServiceNow. You'll see more and more of that happening to where it goes up to that cloud provider. They see and they're intelligent enough to understand that this traffic really is destined for something they have a direct connection for. So rather than send it out the internet to get inspected, bring it back through the internet to go back into an internet connection, they just have backhauls. So there's a lot of these things that are happening that really optimize that end user experience. And, and at the end of the day, that transformation is about optimizing that end user experience and how do you do it quickly and securely? I think SAS is a big component to that that almost every organization needs to take a look at. That's great. All right, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for coming on the Insight Podcast and sharing with our viewers this insightful information. As always, I am your host, Daniel Altahar, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Mark. Thanks, Chad. Yeah. Thanks.